Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a case study uh, on one of my clients and her name is Morgan Stark. Morgan has worked with me for coming up to 30 weeks, I think next week. Uh, and today's topic uh, is about how you can achieve your long-term body composition goals and eat more. Now I know that probably sounds like a foreign concept. How can I lose body fat? but how can I also eat more? So it's not as simple as it sounds and there is definitely a process of achieving this. So I'm going to give you that example today um, with Morgan's uh, situation um, by starting off by showing her fat loss phase and then following it up with a reverse dieting phase. In this particular case, Morgan didn't have a heap of body fat that she needed to lose. So it's kind of only taken us one uh, cycle of this fat loss and reverse dieting process to kind of get her to a really good place. But for many of us, there may actually be a number of uh, fat loss phases and reverse diet phases for us to actually get to that end place. But the good news is it is possible, uh, but we just need to be patient uh, and give time to this. Uh, I'll start off by just reading out um, Morgan's testimonial. So she has been an amazing client to work with. Um, she is such a sweet girl uh, and has really taken this on wholeheartedly. So I, I want to give you her background so that you can um, understand, I guess, where she's come from and then how this kind of all fits in. So here's her testimonial. So she says, from a training perspective, um, I've always been an active individual and I grew up doing a lot of competitive swimming and Nordic skiing, uh, as well as a great deal of outdoor recreation like backpacking and hiking. In effort to improve my body composition, I started weightlifting with little dumbbells uh, and doing HIT in my living room about seven years ago. And I only really started compound weightlifting, so squats, uh, deadlifts and bench press about five years ago. I never had a personal trainer, instead just making my own programs based on the guidance of informed fitness professionals like Eric Helms, Dr. Eric Helms, uh, Dr. Mike Isriatel, myself and Lane. So thank you for that. As my training age increased, I started to periodize my training and as a result of that, progressive overload and consistency, no matter how busy I am with school or travel, I've seen some great increases in strength as well as improvements in my body composition. I grew up on a standard American diet and like many people in my initial approach to changing my body composition was to do more aerobic activity, which didn't work. No surprises there. Uh, it was only after learning about the, um, what a calorie was that I started to make uh, any appreciable, ch appreciable change. I started changing my diet first by introducing lots of vegetables and then by cutting out sweets and sugary drinks entirely. I lost a lot of weight uh, and I was training and probably in a larger deficit than I realized and I maintained this until I changed my diet even further. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune thyroid condition, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, about four years ago, and I fell prey to the dietary protocols that the internet gurus um, purported would cure my condition. This meant that I cut out all gluten, all dairy, and only ate animal protein and vegetables, and my weight continued to drop to my lowest ever at 105 pounds. I lost my period during this time as well. My weight and my cycle never really recovered until two, two years ago, and by that time I was eating a sufficient amount of protein and training intelligently with compound list lifting and minimal cardio. You can already see Morgan's really made some big changes, um, I guess, since that original diagnosis with her training style, uh, elimination of cardio, which we know isn't going to assist in, I guess, building the body that we often are in search for. So she's made some really uh, intelligent changes on her own. I had never had a nutrition coach uh, prior to this point. Uh, the reason I sought out coaching was that two years ago I had been happy with my body fat percentage. Uh, she says here 19% on a DEXA at about 118 pounds. But I had very little muscularity and I was not getting stronger. I thought that both of these required eating 200 or so calories above my maintenance. So I started to do that and I definitely added and it definitely added up over the two year period. Uh, 138 pounds, which was when she first contacted me for coaching. My goal for coaching was to build a balanced approach to nutrition based on scientific principles so that I could gain a bit more freedom uh, from following, from always thinking about food or feeling that I had to adopt strict or extreme dietary approaches to see results. I had a very, it's very hard for me to know how and when to trust the process when it comes to my own nutrition. 
uh, and working with a coach took the anxiety out of that. I never thought that I could lose this amount of weight while building strength, yet I did. The later weeks on the diet on 1200 calories were challenging, but I think seeing the results helped me keep motivated. I was really glad to have flexibility built into my diet and not having to adhere to rigid nutrition protocols and feel like it was mentally more healthy, um, as well as not having to restrict our particular whole food groups. My experience with coaching has been wholly positive and I've really appreciated the detail oriented nature, the detail oriented nature of every aspect of this program. The most valuable thing for me, I think was that I was able to put complete trust uh, in my coach because I knew that they understood my primary goal of losing fat while maintaining my strength in a way that I, that, in a way that would be sustainable long term. And this was something that they had direct experience with. That's Morgan's, uh, I guess, testimonial. So hopefully that gives you a bit of background. Now, this is going to be a longish video today. I do want to go through everything in detail so that if this is applicable for you or it's something that you would like to try and carry out yourself, you have all the tools to do this. So uh, I'll bring up Morgan's um, her photographs first and we can have a look at what she was uh, looking like, I guess, when we first started. So you can see here on the screen, let me just kind of zoom in a little bit here. So this was Morgan's starting uh, body comp. Um, and we'll go and have a look at her side or rear facing and then side facing photos. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and then her side facing photo. So that is week number one. So now you know what she looks like. So here is all of Morgan's data. So um, she has her own client tracking spreadsheet. So you can see here, let me just kind of scroll to the top. So um, this is all the stuff that I have my clients um, report on. So there's a lot of information here. This is their nutrition and their training. Uh, weekly regime, their steps. So she records all of this for me. Uh, and then it carries over into my master data spreadsheet. So it looks very complicated, but I assure you it's not. I'll zoom out just so that you can see a little clearer here. So we've got week one uh, over here, and then you kind of scroll all the way down. Um, this is where she ends her diet at week 12. Uh, and then we begin a reverse diet. So scrolling, 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 scrolling. Uh, and then this, oh, we have we, we have reached almost 30 weeks together. Wow, it's more, 33. So I've been with Morgan for 33 weeks now. So, um, and this is kind of the present week. So best start at the beginning. So here we are, here is her starting body weight, her heaviest weigh-in at the time of, or well, the first week was 134.8. Um, and we started her calories um, at 1835. So I'm always, if somebody doesn't know their initial uh, maintenance calories, the first week of coaching for me is assessing maintenance. So whatever that I can make an estimation based on the information that they give to me about their current activity levels, their occupational activity levels, um, their lean body mass, um, and uh, I guess an assessment of their metabolism, so their dieting history. Uh, and then I'll, I'll use the Mueller equation to come up with these numbers. So you can see their first week was um, highlighted as maintenance. So from there, we actually started the fat loss phase and we dropped her down into 1736, so not a big drop, but you can see here, she's already starting to make some progress. So if we scroll down through, uh, we can see at about week six, uh, she's down to 129 on 1540 calories. Uh, and if we continue to scroll, 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 um, to week 12, her lowest weigh-in for that fat loss phase was 124.4 pounds. Uh, and we got down to, I think her lowest week of calories was here um, at 1165. So let me just pull up her nutrition guidelines because I do set hard calorie floors. So for Morgan, based on her lean body mass, you can see here I've set her hard calorie floor at 1049. So um, there was no way I was ever intending to get her to that, um, but we actually kind of made that decision. Okay, it's time to reverse. It's getting a little bit challenging now. So we didn't, we didn't quite make that. So that was her potential hard calorie floor. So there we are, that was uh, her transition. So over that 12 week period, from heaviest weight to lowest weight, she actually lost 10.4 pounds. 
So I'm going to bring up some photos, I guess, now of her uh, around this time. So let me just quickly scroll in. So I couldn't find her exact week 12 check-in photo. So I've got her week 14. So it's actually when we've started adding calories back in. So this is her um, week 14 check-in photo, uh, her rear-facing picture. So she's lost a lot of body fat through her the back of her legs. She's lost a lot of body fat through the backs of her hips uh, and especially through her upper body as well. So she's um, done such a great job. We'll now have a look at her side profile. So take a look at that. So a big difference in body composition here. Quite the change in body comp here. So a lot of body fat loss uh, and she's also been able to retain quite a bit of her lean, her lean body mass. And then if we go to her front on photo for the, the week or so that just around the end of her fat loss phase, um, we can see she is looking spectacular. That was the result of her fat loss phase. We got her down to 124.4, um, which she's quite happy at that weight. Um, we had then had a discussion around the reverse dieting approach. Um, given that this was kind of the first time she'd really done this and exercised it in a controlled fashion, there's always a little bit of, I guess, unnerving. Um, so we had a conversation about well, what's the most amount of weight you would be happy regaining during this time, but to give you caloric flexibility because no one wants to stay on those low calories, you know, around 1200 calories. You might be able to do it for a short period of time, but it's not something that's sustainable. So the idea is that we reverse diet her out, trying to maintain as much of that fat loss as possible, but help to recover um, some of her calories. So she had kind of said, you know, 126, maybe 127, definitely not over 130 because that's kind of where she had started and that, that wasn't something that she'd wanted to do. So we set out with the reverse diet um, as a, conser a conservative approach. So somewhere around 0.2 to 0.4% of her body weight um, as a maximum allowable weekly weight gain. So if she gained more than that, I wouldn't give her a calorie increase. So that's kind of the principle that we followed throughout and we started adding calories back in. So you can see here, um, first week back into reverse dieting, I've taken her back up to her predicted maintenance and that's about the minimum that you want to return your calories to after a deficit. So taking calories to an amount that will maintain your weight. So 1400 calories. Uh, and then we went through that reverse diet process. So at the six week mark, she actually is less. So you'll see here at week six, she got down to 123.5. In fact, she had a, a lighter weigh in again uh, here at week five, um, but we'd, already, we'd taken her calories up to about 15.24. So what that suggests to me at that point was, okay, she's still in a deficit. Now, how does that make sense? She's continuing, continuing to lose weight, but we're at, we've added calories back since she was dieting. So there's a couple of, I think, um, phenomenons that happen when we reverse diet. Um, one of those is just that the increase in calories that we've provided via the diet has given her a bit of an energy boost and she's feeling a bit better, uh, maybe a little bit more motivation now that she's got some more calories in the tank to get back in the gym and train a little harder. And sometimes, that uh, amount of calories that we've increased by has actually still been overcompensated by the extra effort that she's now able to put into her training. And thus, it's actually kept her in a deficit. So she's continued to lose. It's, it's strange and interesting to see this happen, but um, it's definitely a good sign for her metabolism that things are really starting to pick back up. So, the other reason why we might see somebody continue to lose weight, even though we've started to add back calories, is that her metabolism is now adapting to those higher calories and it super compensates. It adapts and actually surpasses the amount of calories that we've reintroduced, thus remaining in a deficit. So hopefully that kind of gives you a bit of insight as to why that happens. It doesn't happen for everybody. Um, but for, I would say, based on our experiences with clients in a reverse diet, probably 50% of people will have that happen at the beginning stages um, shortly after their fat loss phase. We progress through to 
week 12 of her reverse diet. We're now at 1885 calories and she's at 125.2, which is awesome. Now, if we get to the very end of her reverse diet, so we continue, we continue, we continue. So 15 weeks is kind of where we called it quits with calories. She's now at 2,002 calories um, and she's still only at 125 pounds. We then get to week 16 and switch to maintenance. So, okay, from here on, we're not going to take any more calorie increases. She's feeling really comfortable with the amount of food that she's consuming. She has a lot of energy and she's also really happy with her body composition. So at the end of this reverse diet, She's gone from 134.8 uh, pounds down to 124.4 at the end of the fat loss. She's only back up 1.4 pounds after 16 weeks of reverse dieting. I'll say that again. She's up 1.4 pounds after 16 weeks of reverse dieting. And we've been able to take her calories all the way up to 2010. Now, if we compare that to her starting um, calories, back here at 133 or 134.8, she was kind of maintaining her weight on around 1800 calories, maybe a little bit more. She could, you can see her weight kind of starts to trend down in that first week following these. So it probably suggests that her intakes were a little bit higher or her maintenance was higher, but she's 133 pounds. Here, she's 125.8 pounds. That's 10.4 pounds or nine pounds roughly, um, above her starting or lower than her starting weight and she's eating more calories. So that's, I guess, the process of fat loss with a carefully planned out reverse diet. So uh, let's have a look at her calorie changes and then we're also gonna have a look at her activity changes uh, from the time that we started to um, the time that we finished. At the beginning, her uh, calories were 1835. So we'll just quickly scroll over here so you can get a better view of that. She was on 115 um, grams of protein, 220 grams of carbs, and 55 grams of fat. And you can see over here, her actual protein intakes were quite a bit higher in that first week. Uh, and Morgan had expressed to me that she actually really prefers a higher protein diet. So in week two, I made that switch and it was still within the allowable or the recommended ranges for protein. She was really having a hard time adhering to such a low protein diet, so we took it up. So her second week of calories for the fat loss were 182 and 52 fats. So by the end of her fat loss phase, um, let's get down here, she got down to 120, so I did have to make a small tweak to her protein just to help facilitate fat loss. Now, why didn't I take that from carbohydrate and fat? I don't know if you've tried eating this little carbohydrate or fat, but it sucks. So we kind of made the decision to pull from a little bit of protein and her carbs and fat. So it was overall more manageable. 120 grams of protein or 115 grams of protein on her higher day um, for carbs and fats. That's still within the recommended ranges of protein. Now, yes, it's less than what she's used to, but we have to kind of pull calories from somewhere and to make that whole approach more sustainable and um, more manageable in those final few weeks, that was the decision. So there's her ending macros. And then as we go back through the reverse diet um, process, we kind of slowly start to trickle back in more dietary protein and we finish, where are we? We finish on uh, 225 uh, grams of carbohydrate, 70 grams of fat, and 125 grams of protein. So it's incredible. From the start to the finish, she's now eating 175 calories more overall, and she's nine pounds lighter. So it is possible to get to your goal body composition, and it is possible to have an increase in your calorie intake much much more than what you were if you were at a higher body fat percentage but you can see it takes time and as i mentioned earlier in the video it might be that one diet cycle may not be enough to get you to your goal body composition so you would reverse diet out once you've kind of achieved an initial fat loss 
and then tackle another fat loss. And you can repeat this process over and over until you can incrementally get yourself closer to your ideals, both physically looking at your body composition and your ideals for calories. Finally, to wrap this video up, we'll have a look at her uh, exercise and her activity. So you can see when she first started, she was doing um, quite a bit of um, less cardio. So she was doing a lot of skiing, a lot of hiking. I think it was about, I think it was around the holiday period um, when she was doing this. So there's probably a little bit more of a change than what's normal for her, um, but very low uh, resistance training here. Steps are kind of moderate. This is probably a more normal week. So 200 minutes of resistance training, uh, 225 minutes of skiing, incline walking, etc. And her daily step count was about six and a half thousand. So during the fat loss phase, we actually increased, let's go to week 12. We increased um, her um, resistance training significantly uh, to help with the retention of her lean body mass. So a big transition in how much resistance training that she was doing so that she didn't lose all of that. And we progressively increased her HIIT cardio. So she started at zero um, here, and then we added in 30 minutes, and then we increased that to about 60 minutes by week nine. And then in the final couple of weeks to get those final little bits of body fat off, we increased to 120 minutes total for the entire week. You can see here that her steps were kind of sitting anywhere from uh, 10,000 to 8,000. And again, she had a lot of um, school commitments. So sometimes it wasn't able to be as consistent as previous weeks. The goal would be to be pretty steady with all of these every week where possible, but that's not always the case. Uh, life pops up, exams. I know that she had a lot of exams and a lot of study. Um, so some weeks she was far more sedentary. You can see here, sedentary, 890 steps far more sedentary than others. So that's that whole process with her resistance training. And then coming out of that fat loss phase, um, here we are, so at 405 minutes, we've kind of kept her resistance training as a key feature, but we wanted to taper that back down to something that's more manageable. So what can I now maintain indefinitely? What's easy for me? So we've kind of pulled that back um, to about 300 minutes, give or take, um, on average per week. Um, we've taken her hit cardio back to zero. You can see here, uh, as we scroll through, there is zero cardio, zero, 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 zero. And she's kind of maintaining a daily step count of around nine to 10,000. So that's really manageable for her. And I think the end goal for a reverse diet is to find a exercise split that is comfortable and that's sustainable and also be able to consume an amount of calories that's comfortable and sustainable so she's done that we're just cruising right now and we're deciding you know what's next so at the moment morgan's goals are to be able to return to the gym obviously we've had COVID, and she's been doing a lot of her workouts during this reverse diet from home so she hasn't been able to apply the amount of i guess resistance training uh, that she would like but i think our focus moving forward is to kind of work on building a bit more muscle so i'm really excited to see um, morgan's i guess um, transition over even the next six months um, eating good calories um, and getting back in the gym and uh, building muscle. So stay tuned for that video. I'm very excited to see how things progress. I think we do get to work with each other for a little bit longer. So I hope that this has given you some insight into that whole process of achieving your ideal body composition and being able to get your calories uh, to a really sustainable amount. If you guys have any questions about this, please leave me a comment below. I do check my YouTube comments all the time. Same for Instagram, if you're watching this on Instagram. Um, if you like this video, please give it a big tick or a heart. Uh, share it with somebody that you think might value this video and this information. And I look forward to seeing you next time.